Welcome to the Dr. April Jasper Show, relevant conversations for business owners of today. If you suffer from dry, scratchy, irritated eyes, the problem may actually stem from your eyelids. Cleansing eyelids daily is essential for maintaining healthy eyes, which is why doctors recommend OcuSoft Lid Scrub Allergy Eyelid Cleanser. New OcuSoft Lid Scrub Allergy removes oil, pollen, and other contaminants from your eyelids to effectively reduce redness, irritation, and itching caused by seasonal allergies. These pre-moistened wipes are easy to use, on the go, or at home. Simply wipe and leave on. As the industry standard of care, OcuSoft has a full line of eyelid cleansers for various conditions. Available through eye care professionals, most retail outlets, and Amazon.com. Visit OcuSoft.com for more details. Welcome everyone, it's Dr. April Jasper here and I am excited to be at the Optometric Management Symposium with Dr. Shira Koresh. And Dr. Koresh, you know, I'm gonna call you Shira because you're my friend and it's just the way I am, but uh, I'm just happy that you're here with me. Thanks for being at the meeting, thanks for lecturing, thanks for being the doctor you are and just overall, I think you're amazing. Oh my gosh. Well. <laughs> Thank you so much for having me at the meeting. Thank you for inviting me to lecture. Thank you for being my friend. I yeah. love being your friend, so I'm always happy to hear that. Um, this has been an amazing meeting. Yeah. Really, really awesome. So really fun to be a part. And the team here is so organized. It was such a pleasure to Good. work with this team. Yeah, Awesome. I'll make sure they know. Hopefully yes. they listen to this too. But uh, what's really cool about Shira being here with me is that she has quite the story. She and I met when she was in optometry school just a little bit ago, but a little more than maybe you might think. And uh, she's had a journey that I don't know she expected to have. So I want her to tell us a little bit about that. So start at the beginning, wherever you think the beginning should start. Oh my gosh. Okay. So let's see. I think I'm going to start from deciding to go to optometry school because that's, that's really place. where my journey started. Yeah. So I was in a program called Health Pro Start, which meant that I was ad automatically going to be admitted into any of 10 health science programs in the undergrad program that I went to. Wow. And I had to keep a journal and I had to declare by the end of the first year of which program I wanted to, to do. Okay. So, so how long did you have then to decide? One year. <gasps> So oh I had one goodness. year in undergrad to decide which program I wanted to go into. So I okay. figured that I would choose one of them because they were all within the health sciences. And I'm like, right. I'll probably like one of them. I wasn't sure what I wanted to do. So I started shadowing them. I shadowed every single one of them and I was absolutely not interested. And then I was in a real, um, it was, <laughs> I had a real problem. Uh -oh. So I had to find something different. And then I started reaching out to all my parents, friends and neighbors. And I just went and started shadowing everybody at work because what I was starting to find is that even though something, everything looked good on paper, yeah. when I went to go shadow people, I wasn't really so interested. Ah. Okay. So then um, my friend's mom is an ophthalmologist and she told me, well, you should check out optometry. If I had to do it all over again, I would choose optometry because at this age, I don't really want to be operating anymore and I can't get a job as an ophthalmologist. Wow. So powerful. Very powerful. I didn't even know that optometry existed, to be honest. Started shadowing optometry and I, like, as cliche as it sounds, I fell in love. Yeah. So the first optometrist that I shadowed was in an optical setting and I was completely enraptured. And I'm like, okay, maybe it was just because he was charismatic. So I went to go shadow another optometrist <laughs> in a different setting. Are they all this happy? And <laughs> I loved it. They were, it was amazing. It was completely different, but it was just, so I shattered a couple of them and I was mm -hmm. like, okay, this is what I want to do. I had to drop out of that honors segment of my honors program leave all of that on the table of not going to any of those health science programs. Wow. And I put all my eggs in um, going basket. into optometry school. I love it. So from there, I decided I wanted to go to SUNY optometry. I went to SUNY. Amazing experience. I got an amazing, um, I did the combined optima, the combined ODMS program. So I got introduced to glaucoma research there, got to present at Arvo as a student, which was incredible. And then that catapulted me into going to residency with that had a focus on glaucoma and disease at the New York VA Harbor Healthcare System with Murray, Dr. Murray Fingeret, who's a close mentor of mine now, and Dr. Canellos. Wow. 
So you want me to keep going? Yeah. So that was okay. year one. And I guess we should ask you before you go any further. So it's been 10 years. I Eight graduated years? in 2015. Okay. So it's not this been is 10. You almost are super 10. young. Almost. Okay. Yeah, no, not exactly. Almost. <laughs> I'm so young. Um, You're still considered a young OD and, and all I the am. standards that are out there. It's yet less than 10 years. So that's awesome. All right. So, so do you still feel like you made the right decision and nobody even knows how, where you're at today. So we'll go for that next. So I think optometry is such a wonderful field. I, yes, I love optometry and I absolutely love everything that optometry has given me personally. So wow. I got married in my third year of optometry school. I had my first um, kid in during my residency. <gasps> wow. I got married in my second year of optometry school, but didn't have my first child for another nine years. <laughs> okay. So that was a roller coaster. Oh and my gosh. Yes. It was great. My three, I had three weeks off. Wow. And during those three weeks, my Holy sister cow. got married and I had to prepare for my big CE talk that they make you do in residency. Because oh when my. I came back that week that I got back was the talk. <laughs> so that was my and my first kid, you know, he's he's kind of he's very resilient. And I oh. think that it's, it's kind of uh, the way that he was brought into the world. I love it. But anyway, so then from there, my residency, I started off in a private practice ophthalmology optometry setting for just a couple of months until I got the opportunity of a lifetime to join the faculty of Columbia University. OK, so Colum doing what? So Columbia in, um, hired me more of as as an experiment, to be honest. They wanted to see if an optometrist could be integrated into their tertiary care glaucoma center. Wow. That was, uh, I got to work with like this world renowned ophthalmology team, but I also realized very quickly that glaucoma within tertiary care centers is very different from just managing regular glaucoma. So sure. that experience, I was at Columbia on faculty there for close to five years. I did, actually it was a little over four years. Um, while I was there, they also asked me to launch a myopia control practice, which I did. Was that um, during 2020? That was right before COVID. Okay. It was, I think we launched the clinic like January or February before COVID happened. Oh my gosh. And then, yeah. So that was, and it was before, um, yeah, that was, that was when we started things about myopia control. Then fast forward from there, COVID had me doing telemedicine. So I got to run the telemedicine initiative. That's, I remember Columbia. that. Remember that? I think I remember calling you and saying, hey, I see you're doing this. I don't know what to do. And you helped me with some of that. Well, I wrote an article for. That's some, right. I think for optometric, optometric management. management. Yeah. So we we had wow. to create all these different guidelines of triaging patients telemedicine wise. Oh. And during that time, I was around the clock doing with my very good friend and colleague, Dr. Suzanne Sherman, who we were kind wow. of together at Columbia and doing all these different things together. Um, so we would do telemedicine visits and then, um, then we got thrown back into clinic in the summertime. I went, I stayed at Columbia one more year after that. And then my husband and I decided it was time to come home to Michigan. So my husband's also from Michigan. Oh, I love His it. sister set us up, but <laughs> <never>. <laughs> um, yeah, so we came home. Um, best, best thing ever. We are so happy to be Michigan. It's funny that we're in Orlando, which is technically the happiest place on earth, but we have been calling Michigan the happiest, <laughs> the place, happiest on earth place because it's just so nice to live near our families and kind of the suburban life after yeah. New York. Not that we didn't love New York. We loved New York too, but it was very different. So that's kind of, that brought me to Michigan. I and, joined. And you skipped to something in there. So now you have how many children? I have four kids. And were they, well, one is tiny. One is 10 months old. Okay. So which ones were born, was, were any born in Michigan? So this my, one. okay. So my, <laughs> this, my, I have two boys and then two girls. My girls were born in Michigan. Okay. So I have a 2020 baby. And wow. I have a, um, just now this, this past year. Wow. So yeah, it was baby number four. So I, when I came to Michigan, I joined the faculty of Kresge Eye Institute, Wayne State's ophthalmology department. They hired me as the director of optometry and it was a very different environment. And that's really what catapulted me into learning specialty lenses. They asked me to learn that because they didn't have anybody doing it there. Oh my gosh. I was so intimidated. Um, let me think Melissa Barnett. John Gellis, Katie Morrison, <laughs> who else do I need to call out? Suzanne Sherman. Oh, wow. Um, there, what I would say is that it's not true that you can't learn a new skill after optometry school. The resources that you have today 
yeah. through optometric management and others yeah. and mentors and different conferences and free CE, whatever workshops. They're so wonderful. Not only that, yeah. but the consultants for the companies that provide these different things like, um, like uh, the scleral lens companies. Yes. They're so wonderful. And I was able to learn how to do scleral lenses. And I was thrown into the deep end and I was fitting these very complex patients with a lot of people holding my hand. And I can't That's tell incredible. you something. I loved it so much that I kind of shifted things in my life. And <laughs> now that my husband and I decided to leave for, uh, to start a cold start specialty practice, we are focusing on scleral lenses and dry eye. <laughs> Believe I it think not, it's incredible from that. So that's where I am now. We are excited to have Cooper Vision as a sponsor of our podcast. Cooper Vision is one of the world's leading contact lens manufacturers, and they serve eye care professionals and patients in over 130 countries. Their innovative products help millions of patients see every single day. One of the technologies and innovations that we love the most about Cooper Vision is their groundbreaking technology in soft contact lenses that helps to slow the progression of myopia in children eight to 12 years old at the initiation of treatment. Who would have thunk? Would I mean, thunk? did you did you think when you and I were together, we met at, when you were in school, that you would end up one day in your own practice fitting no. scleral lenses? No, definitely not. Because I always liked contact lens, but I never wanted to be limited to contact yeah. lens. I really liked learning the entire disease component and I right. always was very much interested in glaucoma. Yeah. But I think that all of those experiences that I had allow me to manage my patients so much better because I kind of get the ophthalmology game a little bit with right. it. I know how to co-manage patients properly, refer back to them, speak their language, yep. um, and work together with optometrists who also specialize in different things. So. I don't regret any of those things. And I, right now I'm really loving doing the scleral lenses. Yeah. But I want to tell you, I yes. want to remind you how okay. we met. Okay. I, I think I'm getting the story <laughs> wrong. Is that what remember? <laughs> we were, you came in to speak at the career symposium. Yes. Okay. So SUNY had, I think it was the inaugural year of this career symposium that SUNY had. And you came in to speak to the students. And obviously the entire room was enraptured because you were talking about Aww. how you have this family life and you have this private practice life and you do all these interesting things and you have um, just such a strong handle on things. So after the talk, everybody was clamoring around you trying to ask you questions. And I kind of called through the crowd like, do you have plans for lunch? Will you sit next to me? <laughs> and you looked at me and you said, yeah, save me a seat. I did. You I did? have to eat. I tell people still that today. <laughs> you have to eat. Yeah. If people call me, I'm like, I have to eat. So yes. <laughs> so we sat together. You came upstairs. I, I grabbed all my, my best friends. Um, an optometry school and we all had a table together oh, and we just man. got to pick your brain. Yeah, that was fun. I remember very and well. And then I kind of haven't left you alone since. <laughs> so That's okay. I've been That's the best mentor about. I've ever had. Oh, so I'm this so was, glad. Yeah. So no, to answer your question, I never thought in a million years I'd open up a practice. Never, ever, ever. Yeah. Even two years ago, I would have told you I was not opening up a practice because yeah. I loved working in academic ophthalmology departments. I and just really working enjoyed with your it. Husband. So I didn't think I was going to work with my oh, husband my, either. Yes. So Oh, and husband. he's awesome, by the way. Uh, he awesome. He's here somewhere and probably out there buying equipment is what I'm thinking. <laughs> he likes his gadgets. But my husband, perfect timing, got his MBA and he was pushing me for a long time to open up my own thing. Um, it was really baby number That's four good. that really pushed me to see. Really? Why? What I got to hear this story. Oh, really? Baby number so four is what It was baby you? number four that pushed me over the edge because I wanted the flexibility. Uh, it was honestly for me, people talk about how they had this dream of private practice their entire life. Yeah. That was totally not me. I was happy to work with someone. I loved my bosses. I loved my colleagues, yep. my, like the staff, everybody. People are really nice to work with in a collegial environment. And I really liked what I was doing. Um, but I kind of was re-envisioning a new life yeah. for myself. And at that point, now I have four kids. And I wanted to be able to take them to carpool. I wanted to be able to go to all their yeah. different events. And the private practice life leads to so much more flexibility that we have not looked back. It's been five months. Wow. And the best five months, the best decision. There's obviously hurdles and lots of things that I'm watching your podcast for, which yep. is awesome. Um, 
but private practice is a wonderful, wonderful new life for me. So, so this podcast, as you know, because you listen, is all about inspiration and helping people to really know they can do whatever they choose to do in our profession. So what would you say to somebody listening that you've learned over the years of all the different things you've done, challenges you had? And she has chickens, too, by the way, now. We do have a chicken coop. <laughs> We have a chicken coop and we have fresh eggs every morning. So when the egg craze was going on and there were so, it was so expensive for eggs, we still had fresh eggs. Yeah. What advice, what words of wisdom, or maybe even just what would you say to someone who is discouraged and needs a little boost, a little pick me up, a little encouragement? What would you say? I would say two things. Number one, get yourself really good mentors. Yeah, that's good. Oh, my goodness, get yourself a really good mentor (laughs) and get a few of them in different areas of life. Yeah. And work as a team. Now, Katie Morrison, if you're listening to this, I called Katie and asked her about her practice that she opened in Arizona. And she told me, you can build the practice that you want to build. You don't have to build somebody else's practice. If you don't want to see a certain type of patient, if you want to see a certain type of disease or you want to accept certain insurances or you don't want to accept certain insurances, you carve your own path. You can do it. it. There's so many different ways of practicing. And she really was the one that... um, was the straw that that made me realize that I don't have to do something in a cookie cutter yeah. way. I could do it my own way. And that was really exciting. And that's what I would encourage other people to do as well. Melissa Barnett as well. Melissa yeah, and Katie yeah. both told me the same thing. Yeah. Oh, that's good. Well, I want you all to know today we were on stage. We were talking about medical optometry, what the future looks like and where are we today? And one of the things I love the most about what Shira said was that we, as optometrists, we, we really are superheroes. Is that the way you said it? Well, I, But yes. what you meant was that may not be a good thing. And so give them a quick synopsis in our last minute of kind of what your message was. Um, so it's kind of like a clickbait thing that we're superheroes. Okay, optometrists are superheroes because we try to do it all. We try to be yeah. the best refractionist and do the contact lens fittings and do the scleral lenses and treat glaucoma and manage patients pre and post cataract surgery and all the things. Um, But sometimes it's better to think about how you wanna specialize your practice, how you wanna carve out a niche for yourself so that you don't have to be doing everything. You can't be everything for everybody and you can't be that person for your patients. Sometimes we have to think that we are comprehensive optometrist we can we can detect everything decide what you want your specialty to be and carve out a niche in that in the area that you love most i love it thank <laughs> you for doing this with me thanks oh for being gosh, here thank you so much for having me i know really you guys have to so get on an airplane we do so back to the cold michigan to the other happiest place on earth <laughs> <laughs> thank you all for listening i know you're going to enjoy this and i'm definitely going to have shira back on so we can talk more about her practice as she continues to grow thank, thank you, you. Your eyes and your vision are under attack, damaging blue light from the sun. Your phone, your computer, your tablet, even light bulbs and car headlights is constantly bombarding you. The good news is our eyes actually already have a line of defense to counter the effects of blue light. This defense is made up of three pigments called carotenoids. MacuHealth with Micromicell, the only supplement with the exclusive patent on all three macular carotenoids and micromicell technology.